How many days does direct sunlight shine into the chamber at Newgrange? Before the winter of 2020-2021, the answer to this question wasn't known precisely. In the days surrounding winter solstice of 2020, a study was carried out by the OPW and National Monument Service, and some of the findings were published in Archaeology Ireland the following year. During the study, the entrance gate was covered so that light could only enter Newgrange through the roof box, and cameras were set up in the chamber to capture observations for 41 days around winter solstice. The study produced excellent data relating to the timing and positioning of light within the chamber over multiple days. One of the most interesting statements given was this. The last traces of direct sunlight entering the chamber were captured on 8 January 2021. This seems to answer our question as January 8th is 18 days after the solstice, and the sun would be at a similar position 18 days before the solstice. But what does this actually mean and how does it apply to the time when Newgrange was built? To answer this, we first need to understand where the threshold of the chamber is defined to separate from the passage, and what is meant by direct sunlight. The article doesn't say exactly where the chamber is considered to begin, but this is usually simply defined as the point where the passage opens into the chamber. Many other passage tombs in Ireland had a sill stone on the floor, clearly dividing the passage from the chamber, but interestingly, Newgrange does not have one. If it did, it would have marked this position after the last orthostats of the passage. This ambient beam of light appears when the sky brightens and is caused by light bouncing off the sky and shining into the chamber after being restricted through the roof box and the passage. If your eye was positioned anywhere in the ambient beam, you would see a bright patch of sky through the roof box. The direct beam of light appears when the sun comes into line with the roof box. If your eye were in the direct beam, you would see some part of the actual disk of the sun. In the past, the axis of the Earth was more tilted, so the sun rose a little further south at the winter solstice than it does today. At that time, the sun was more centered in the roof box, and so the direct beam reached further back into the chamber. Exactly how far is the subject of part two of this video. Today, the sun rises towards the left of the roof box as seen from the chamber, and as it rises, it comes more in line with the roof box in passage but it is higher in the sky by then, and so its light can't reach as far back in the chamber as it once did. For many days, either before or after the solstice, even when rising further north, the sun still comes into alignment as it comes up, but the further from the solstice, the higher it has to be in the sky before it will be centered. This means the direct beam of light won't be as far back in the chamber. If the sun was no longer visible from a viewing position on the floor of the chamber at some point, but then that position was shifted forward, part of the sun would again be visible through the roof box. During the year, when the sun rises at positions too far north, it is too high in the sky for the direct light beam to reach the chamber at all. Today, direct sunlight shines into the chamber for 18 days before and after the winter solstice, but when Newgrange was built, the situation was a little different. Besides the change in how much the Earth's axis is tilted, the orientation of the direction Earth's axis points in space has changed in relation to its slightly elliptical orbit. Although the orbit is nearly circular, the Earth travels fastest at the point nearest the Sun and slower at the farthest point. Today, the nearer and faster part of the Earth's orbit occurs a little after the northern hemisphere's winter solstice, so the Sun changes position more quickly at that time of year. 
In the Neolithic, when Newgrange was built, winter solstice occurred at a slower point in the orbit, about 90 degrees from the fastest position. 18 days before and after the winter solstice of 2020, the sun was at a declination of a little less than negative 22 degrees, and that same position was reached in 3200 BC, 22 or 23 days before or after the winter solstice. Although the sun comes up quite far to the left of the roof box at that position, and has to rise relatively high to come in line with it, according to the study, that is the minimum position that still allows some direct sunlight to reach the chamber. 22 or 23 days corresponds to exactly one sixteenth of a year, just like Alexander Tom's hypothesis of a 16-part division of the year connected to horizon alignments indicated by orientations of megalithic sites in Britain. To divide the year into 16 parts, most intervals would be 22 or 23 days, ideally being arranged so the sun reaches the same positions on the horizon at each interval by adjusting to the parts of the year when the sun moves faster and slower. I have done analysis of various divisions of the Neolithic year, and one particularly good set of intervals to preserve horizon positions around the winter solstice has 22 days leading up to the day of the solstice and 23 days afterward to return to the same declination. Could this correspond symbolically to a count of 21 orthostats on one side of the passage, plus one to reach the chamber, for a total of 22, followed by a count of 22 orthostats on the other side of the passage, plus one to return to the exterior, for a total of 23? Curbstone 15 at the nearby passage tomb of Nauth has markings that have also been proposed as being connected to a 16-part division of the year with 22 or 23-day intervals. There are also growing indications of alignments to horizon positions corresponding to 16ths of the solar year, and for modern observations, these would best be observed on December 3rd or January 8th at sites with possible orientations a little further north than the winter solstice position for pre- and post-winter solstice markers. Also, because the tilt of the Earth today is less than in the Neolithic, modern winter solstice occurs when the Sun is at declination negative 23.44 degrees instead of negative 24 degrees, and this corresponds to 12 or 13 days before or after winter solstice in 3200 BC. This means the first light we can see in the chamber today corresponds to 22 or 23 days before the winter solstice up to 12 or 13 days before winter solstice, and then we no longer see the light at positions matching the ancient solstice, but instead skip back to 12 or 13 days after solstice, continuing on until 22 or 23 days after solstice, corresponding to January 8th. Furthermore, because the range of obliquity of the Earth's axis is between 22.1 degrees and 24.5 degrees, the Sun may just fall short of the chamber threshold at the absolute minimum, but for the next three minimums, over the next 100,000 years, no minimum falls below 22.2 degrees, so over that time, the Sun will always shine into the chamber if it were somehow preserved that long. Of course, at these minimums, direct sunlight would not shine very far back into the chamber, and for fewer days. Thank you for watching, and please see the video description for links to sources and other related videos, as well as links to contribute to the research and educational work of the Archaeoastronomy Database. Your support is greatly appreciated.